Uh, first of all, my name is Estevan. We are All-American Print Supply. I want to thank all of you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to be looking at direct-to-garment transfer or DTF workflow and kind of focusing in on curing. Uh, before we get started, if you're watching this on YouTube or if you have not been to the YouTube channel already, make sure you check us out on there. It's AA Print Supply Co. Be sure to hit the red subscribe button, tap that post notification bell, and drop some thumbs up if you find any of our content useful or helpful. Uh, we're going to have a very special guest joining us today. You may have seen him from some of our past videos. Actually, let's bring him out right now. Give him a round of applause. Uh, this is my best friend. This is Vincent. So during this, I'm going to be printing a bunch, giving it off to Esteban so he can go ahead and uh, go through the different curing methods that we have today. There's a couple of them. Maybe you didn't know a few of them, so uh, I'll just start printing. All right, let's get to it. We're going to be running these direct-to-garment transfer or DTF prints on our Epson F2100. We're also running our Cathari NeoRip software with our DTF printing profile. We also have this paired today with our new AA Platin Grip Tape. Uh, it's a great way to secure your transfers in place, very reusable, and you can also maintain a really good platen height so you're not calibrating for a lowered setting. As far as heat options, you may recognize right here the Geonite DK20. This is a great heat press, a lifetime warranty on the heating element, major clearance there for a lot of versatility as far as what we're drying, what we're curing. Next to this, I have my Vastex F1000. It's a very popular flash cure unit that you may see more commonly in a screen print setup, but for our purposes, we're using this as a very efficient way to dry our powdered direct-to-garment or DTF transfers. Over here, the Vastex D100. This is probably one of the more compact and efficient uh, conveyor dryer units on the market. We'll get to this a little more in just a moment. And uh, we have one more surprise option we're gonna look at before we wrap up today. So uh, as far as our prints are concerned, we're working with our Ecofreen line of direct-to-garment transfer or DTF film. Uh, we're also gonna be working with our direct-to-garment transfer or DTF hot melting powder. Thank you so much. Today we're gonna be focusing a little more on the drying aspect, which is very crucial, I would say, for direct-to-garment transfer or DTF printing. We wanna make sure that the hot melting powder that he applied to the wet print is properly dried so that we can get a great adhesion, your customer gets a long wash life, and no one's complaining. Quick tip to get a better cure is to actually preheat the lower platen, closing the machine empty at full temperature, and I recommend, uh, depending on your machine, approximate range between about 320 to 350 Fahrenheit, and you're gonna close this for, I'd say, about at least half a minute to get that lower platen nice and warm. This is uh, usually not gonna come with any special electrical needs, very versatile. Probably the most common option that you'll see in a direct-to-garment transfer setup near one of these printers. And it's gonna be very even to go ahead and get this dried. As you can see with this clamshell, I'm kinda stuck here manually holding this, which is totally fine. Um, but you may encounter with this sort of uh, drying technique bottlenecks. You may be waiting to stamp your dried process or dried prints. Again, I'm not making contact. I'm just kind of lowering this very close to the wet ink that we've powdered here. About one to two minutes, depending on our print size. Super easy, really quick. You guys are probably already doing stuff like this. So uh, option A is the heat press. Uh, what we want to clear up today is the flash curing method. This is one of our, uh, you know, kind of not super selling uh, high volume products, but very efficient with this kind of drying. Um, so again, we're working with our F1000. This is actually a better option for curing this. Reason being one, it's about 30 to 45 seconds to cure. So it's much quicker than a heat press. I'll show you guys really quick. I don't even have to stand next to the heat press. I'm gonna go ahead and put it under my flash cure and I can walk away. Another big positive guys is this flash cure is less than a thousand dollars. And so when you're looking at heat presses, looking at conveyor dryers, different items, in terms of what's quicker, what's cheaper, what's more affordable, this guy's the way to go. So flash cure, guys, if you are a screen printer, bust out your flash cure, um, you can use it. And it's done, it was that quick. Uh, all we are looking for is that kind of glazy look. Uh, once it kind of looks like, almost like a glaze, glaze texture to it, we're done. On our flash cure, this F1000 in particular, um, there's actual, there's no like specific temperature like number. It's high and it goes all the way from number uh, six to low. Um, again, we want to cook this as quick as possible. We don't want to be waiting here the whole time. And so I do crank it all the way up. On your flash cure, just put it to high um, and kind of monitor it. Some different uh, flash cures have different heights of how close it gets to the actual transfer. We want it as close as possible as well. Really good option to consider if you are in a production setting, trying to maximize your efficiency in your workflow. Uh, up next, we're going to be looking at our conveyor dryer. So uh, this one in particular is kind of a space saver. Uh, big pros with this are gonna be the convenience. After you have your powdered print, you're really just gonna place it, set it, and forget it. I would say maybe a box or a bin or a tub, 
positioned strategically to catch all of these cured prints that are coming out. Um, that would probably be the most efficient way workflow wise. This is typically gonna have a slightly larger footprint. So it may not be ideal for each and every workspace, but if you do have the electrical requirements and the space in your production area, this can be a really convenient way to free up your time and everything. On our uh, D100 here, we have our height all the way low because again, we want it as close to the paper as possible. Um, our heat is almost at high, it's about a six, and then our belt speed is about a five and so we want obviously the quickest transfer possible we don't be waiting all day that looks perfect again it is a little i don't want to say wrinkled but it's it's perfect to transfer right now i would put this on a shirt immediately um, i know this is a perfect transfer because i can actually touch the transfer it feels smooth it's not going anywhere and like esteban said i'll feel comfortable shipping this um, but there is one more option that we were going to talk about right yeah talk about the toaster oven here <laughs> Um, now, this is something that might be a little more economical as far as sourcing. The problem is the heat's not very consistent um, and you're limited to size. Like this thing is only going to give you eight and a half by 11 transfers at most. And so it's not going to fit most people's needs. And again, it's hard to get consistent transfers with this. We've tested several different brands on Amazon. They're uh, not consistent at all. And so again, if you have a heat press, please use it. A lot of my tech calls come from DTF and people are using this still. I don't know why. Today, hopefully we've kind of push you away from that because again, if you want good transfers, don't use this. Like I said, we've tested a few. I've gotten a bigger version of it. Again, temperature wise, the heating elements are not just, they're meant for food. They're not meant to cook powder Evenly. Uh, or ink <laughs> or anything like that. So if you're gonna go for a bigger one, might as well get a conveyor or a flash gear. Well, you guys, I hope we gave you some awesome options. Like I said, the flash cure, probably gonna be the fastest. Just wanna keep in mind that you do wanna be nearby, keeping an eye on it, have those settings dialed in. Heat press will probably be your most convenient. You probably already have one of these. Dry, transfer, yeah. print, finishing press. So this one may be a little more time consuming and labor intensive. And this will probably be the easiest, right? Yeah, for production purposes, drop it in there, let it go. Don't have to worry about it. Again, if it's a one person shop, I don't want to have to focus on my transfers burning or curling um, again. So this is a great option as well. It kind of whatever fits your business needs. Not everyone needs a conveyor dryer, um, but again, price point too as well. But again, everybody has access to this equipment if you are doing these transfers. And so use what you have and just kind of see what your options are as well. If you want to speed it up a peel and stretch test, um, I have the transfers. We can get a shirt. If you okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do it. So we're just going to go and start here. You can see no resistance came right off. Let that cool down, really bond adhere onto the material. And what I like to do now, it's not always required, but uh, kind of like a finishing press yeah. just to kind of remove any gloss or shine that may be on there. And with the same time and temp, we're just going to go ahead and give this a five second finisher real quick. Uh, it's going to increase that hand feel. And if you didn't flick off all of your powder, this will also give you a chance to kind of melt any remaining specks if you weren't on top of that step as bad as we could be. And guys, just to notice too, the transfer when Esteban peeled it, there's nothing left on this sheet. That's how I know we got a perfect transfer. Um, Esteban's going to go ahead and show you yeah. guys. Hand feel came out great. Let's see here. We got this on camera. Let me see if I can get a better angle. He's about to rip the shirt, guys. Uh, you know, in, in any scenario, you're not going to pull that hard or rip the shirt. But again, this is super stretchy. It's not going anywhere. This is 100% cotton. The last shirt we had was 100% polyester. So we're good to go. There we go. Saw it here first. Uh, if you do have more questions, you can reach out to us. Um, feel free to drop any comments down below. Make sure you head over to the YouTube channel. It's aprintsupplyco on youtube.com. Like, subscribe, comment, leave questions. We'll get to those as soon as possible. You know, the process, again, is still fairly new. And so if you're not comfortable doing it, like I said, give us a call, give it a try. We'll walk you through it. We'll make sure that you're comfortable doing it. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it. I've, every customer I've talked to that's done this as well, it just compliments your business that you've already doing. And so don't be afraid to reach out to us and uh, ask us questions. Could have said it better myself. His name is Vincent. I'm Estevan. We are All American Print Supply. Thank you guys all so much. See you on the next one. Thanks guys.